we have my man, Mr. Reagan Archibald, and he's one of the leading peptide functional medicine and longevity specialists in the entire United States of America. And today we are talking all things optimizing your health, longevity, stem cells, peptides, and much, much more. We're going to be diving into this episode of the Happy Hustle Podcast. Do you want blissful balance in your personal and professional life? Great. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack, and I want to help you happy hustle a life you love, one full of passion, purpose, and positive impact. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, a professional model slash actor, a digital marketing specialist, a podcast host, author, a biohacker, an eco-warrior, a martial artist, a hippie cowboy, and a humanitarian. My goal is to educate, inspire, and entertain you to live a life of passion, purpose, and positive impact. It is time to happy hustle your dream reality. Yee yee! All right, my man, Mr. Reagan Archibald, welcome to the Happy Hustle Podcast. I am super stoked to rock the mic with you, brother. Man, I'm so glad to be here, especially since you gave me that hat that says Happy Hustle. <laughs> I wear that all weekend because I just look like strong and people like, what, what does that mean, Reagan? And I'm like, talk to Kerry Jack. He's, he's, he's the dude that can help you. Yeah, man. Hey, I'd like to hear you repping. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited about this one specifically because, you know, there's a lot of happy hustlers out there who are not optimizing their health. And you, my friend, are on the cutting edge of optimizing your health. Specifically, you're a leading peptide functional medicine and longevity specialist in the entire nation. You have an award-winning center called East West Health, which I've been to, and I got intranasal stem cells there and a bunch of peptides, and it was phenomenal. We'll unpack that experience a little bit later, but you have performed over 9,000 labs and counting. You have comp comprehensive blood labs, including 94 important markers that allow you and your team to understand the root cause of health issues. You're also an international speaker, best-selling author. You're also a husband, a father, and a happy hustler, my man. You live in Utah with your kids, Zoe, Dominic, and Jonah, and your beautiful wife, Jessica. And man, you have got it going on. You're also an outdoorsman. We've talked shop about getting out there in the mountains and you know, one of these days you'll come to Montana and we'll, we'll hang out in the woods. But till then, we can uh, rock the mic and share your gifts with our audience. And I'm excited to unpack specifically peptides today. And again, just bettering your health for longevity, you know, really just not just growing old and, and being, you know, mobile, but like really feeling great throughout the process. Um, as you know, one of our 10 alignments of being a happy hustler is optimizing your health. So that's why this is really on point and important. But Reagan, before we get into all that good stuff, what is something interesting about yourself that not too many people know? Wow. Um, uh, probably that um, I, I'm somebody who is uh, very like obsessive compulsive uh, when it comes to um, like metrics on my own health. Like my wife was teasing me last night because I've got like... I upload my Garmin and I'm getting like ready to do VO2 max again. And she's just like, you're so weird. Like what, <laughs> what is it that drives you? And, and I'm, and then like, she sees me read somebody's labs and my eyes are just like bulging because I'm not really like a, like a, a, it's not like the numbers, but it's like the context. And I, I, so here's the thing is like, I love traveling and I love to look at the population of any where I'm going. And so it's just like, um, I, I just, I like data that provides context. And that's probably something I've never talked about before is like my <laughs> obsession with my own biometric markers to the point where I've had to give away devices because I like can't sleep thinking about it. And then um, I love data that relates to population of countries and, and cities and towns. And it's just, yeah, that's it. So there you go. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of weird, but. Hey, that, that kind of makes sense, you know, because you're in the data game, you're looking at labs, you're looking at what's working, what's not for your patients and, mm -hmm. and how they can improve. And, you know, as the saying goes, what you measure, you manage, right? And so sure. I think when it comes to your health, it's important to really know your data, know your metrics and, and be analytical, then make pivots and adjustments accordingly. Um, specifically, I want to talk about data when it comes to overall health, like before we get deep into the weeds of peptides and stem cells and all the things that you're very well known for, 
you're also a functional medicine practitioner and you're very good at reading labs. And one of the things that was a catalyst in my health journey was test, not guess. That used to mm. be our phrase with our biohacking company. Prior to the Happy Hustle, I, I ran a, a biohacking company for about three and a half years. And we would test people on specifically environmental genetic mismatches, toxins in the body and vitamin and mineral deficiencies, you know, and we'd find yeah. the holes that are, that people were lacking when it comes to testing. First and foremost, talk about what tests that you recommend and how frequently we should get them. Man. Well, it's, it's, you know, one thing uh, to get labs ran to find out if you have a disease and that's one reason why I left Western medicine, I was at the University of Utah and realized like I, after I had five doctors misdiagnose me, they didn't realize I had an autoimmune disease and it was right there in front of them, but they didn't run the right tests. So, so first of all, you want to run tests and, and have the right context around what those markers mean. Hmm. And, and so um, I love blood labs. Um, we do uh, urine tests for mold and mycotoxins um, called metabolomics. And um, we can see oxidative stress. We can see how your mitochondria is functioning. Now, we can see all those upstream interferences. Same thing you guys are doing. You're finding the deficiencies. Um, you know, we run tests that we want to find the cause of the cause. And, mm. and what that does is it helps find directionality so that when we put the right treatment protocol together, um, we can help optimize somebody's health in, you know, what used to take us three years. Now we can get it done in about six months with the right diagnostics and then the right treatment strategies, which will, you know, we can a, a, a approach a little bit. But um, but I see that uh, in about 20, almost 20 percent of the labs we run, um, people have a life threatening condition and they don't even realize it. And it's mm. getting younger and younger. I mean, just like we see testosterone has dropped. Um, I can't tell you how many dudes in their thirties have very low testosterone and there's so many environmental factors and there's a lot that we could layer in there, but, um, and the stress, but that's, that's a problem. But then we also see people like, you know, they're on the verge of a heart attack, you know, their ferritin sky high, their anti gap sky high. Um, they've got all this inflammation, their C-reactive proteins, like 15, and, um, and then we look at their apolipoprotein A and B, and then we see, man, uh, we put a carotid artery scan and their arteries look like an 80 year old and they're barely 40. So, mm. so, uh, and that's about 20% of the cases. And a lot of these, as you know, I just work only with entrepreneurs because I'm an, an, a healthcare entrepreneur myself. And, um, I find it's the entrepreneurs who we sacrifice our health in order to gain wealth or build our business because that's what drives us. We love it. We love the, the hustle, but we forget to be happy along the way. <laughs> yeah. You should start a podcast. That's like happy hustle, by the way, I'm <laughs> right. going to give that to you. Um, but <laughs> thank you. But yeah, so if we, if, if people can keep the hustle going without losing the happiness, because hmm. the happiness is what triggers oxytocin, allows our blood vessels to relax. It triggers GABA, more serotonin. So you're more creative. And then when you have a month where cash flow crashes, you don't loot, like your world doesn't fall apart because I, I know how it is being an entrepreneur. We answer to one God every month and that's the cash flow God. <laughs> yeah. But there's a way of doing it where you don't have to feel like, you, you know, shameful or whatever um, is going on. And um, and that's the beautiful thing about uh, getting the right test, because if you have the data, then you can take the right action. Yeah. Amen to that, man. That really is the key catalyst, knowing the data. And then making adjustments based on the data. What I've found specifically when I was in the, the health game, <clears throat> running the biohacking company, excuse me, you know, a lot of people would just like listen to their jacked friend about a supplement and they'd be like, oh, this is working for him or her, you know, uh, let's just do that. But everyone's, you know, genetic makeup's different. Everyone's environment is slightly different, you know, in their home life and then obviously diet. There's a lot of factors that make us very unique when it comes to the protocols that are needed for optimal health. And that's why data and testing is imperative. So let's unpack a little bit for, for a little bit deeper when it comes to testing. Are you talking, you know, every quarter, once a year? What, what's your frequency with your patients? Um, it, it really just depends on somebody's goal. Sometimes, um, I have clients who want to run their labs like every month or two months 
And it's just not enough time to see because your biology, like by the time it gets to your blood, it's like it goes, you know, your digestive system, the way your food's being, uh, you know, absorbed, the way your detoxification's working. Uh, you know, and it takes about 90 days to get real changes. So maybe every quarter, um, you know, I like to run it three times a year on average. So like every four months is pretty reasonable. And if somebody's, you know, if we're just uh, looking for, you know, more maintenance, a little bit of optimization twice a year is just fine. Uh, but if somebody has, um, you know, like I, I have a lot of, uh, you know, elite athletes, uh, who, uh, or they, they have been, and now they're running businesses, but they really want to, you know, get to the next level in their health. We'll run it every three months because we'll be trying different uh, treatment protocols. And we want to make sure that those are dialed in, or if someone's doing hormones with us, we may put them on like testosterone and then check again, you know, very soon after they, they've been using their first initial doses to see how we're, you know, how it's calibrating. Yeah. I think that's a, a, a healthy answer, you know, pun intended, it depends, right? <laughs> and it, it really does. Let's be honest. You know, everyone. Sorry, yeah, that did sound it. like a cop out. It depends, <laughs> Carrie. I can't, I can't answer the question of uh, who I'm voting for. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that blatant, but you did, you, you, you put it in terms that are important. There's a lot of context that is needed yeah. in order to, get, to make a, a protocol effective for each person. One of the things that you really doubled doubled down on when we were at your clinic that I thought was eye opening is a lot of these you know blood work facilities that do run labs they're basing the normal range off a of population that's obese and unhealthy, and you were like, actually, this isn't where you want to be. this is not optimal you you know out there listening and watching right now want to be optimal. You want to be a happy hustler. You want to be crushing it, not normal with an obese and overweight population full of chronic disease. Give us a little bit of context as how you guys at East West Health actually track the, the range of what is optimized. Yeah. So look at your labs right now. And if you've ran them at Quest or LabCorp, um, they're, they're using these uh, kind of metrics that are based on averages. And, and as long as you fit within like average 90% of the population and these markers get changed every year, they look at the new averages for 2024 and then 2025 markers are based on those averages. And, you know, as long as you fall within like 90% of the population, then you're considered normal. And uh, that's where I found myself um, 25 years ago um, when my skin was flared up, I had brain fog, I, you know, couldn't sleep at night. Um, and and it, it was like everything looked normal on my labs. And, and uh, what we do in the functional medicine world is we have a, a whole academic team that's constantly looking at the research and saying, okay, what are the first triggers that show up where there's a, a disease pattern building up in the body because symptoms are the last thing to show up. Everyone thinks I feel good, therefore I'm healthy. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. That's like saying, hey, my bank account for my business, we're in the black this month, so everything's fine. But then what you don't realize is well, you've had no new uh, lead flow coming in, for example. And it's like, okay, wait till next month. And that's yeah. when it's going to get real bad. So this, you know, it's just like, that's why data is so important because you can predict the future if you know how to read data in the right way. And, but the data that's been read in the medical world, I mean, you go back to the Rockefellers, uh, you know, early 1900s, and they wanted to eradicate anybody who wasn't based in allopathic medicine. So they got rid of the homeopathic doctors. They said, anyone who's outside of the chemical based industry where doctors treat disease and he segmented it into specialists. And if you, if, if you have a chronic disease, you can resonate with this where you go to one specialist for your kidneys and then you go to your cardiologist for your heart, gastroenterologist for your gut, and they don't talk to each other. And by the end of the, you know, all your visits, you're on like 13 medications. And then you have polypharmacy syndrome where you don't know if it's the drug or the disease that's causing the symptom. Right. And, um, you know, hundred uh, percent of, of, if you're on five or more medications, you have a hundred percent chance of having adverse reactions, but that's the way the Rockefellers want it because it was cheap medicine based on chemicals. 
And they applied that as the new science. And so that's what is carried into the medical model. And that's why in some, you go in some offices and they're literally a hundred years behind the research. When I graduated my school, my academic dean who looked like Einstein, Dr. Smith, really cool damn hair. I mean, I love the guy. And he said, um, medicine is 25 years behind the research. Don't fall into that category. That was mm. 2004, Kerry. 25 wow. years into that. And, and now, like, you look at, especially after COVID, like the compounding interest of, of the data that we have. Right. Um, and, and that's, that's one of the things that we do. So we look at the data and then we narrow those ranges based on what the, the labs show when your body's outside of optimal range. Because it's like, do you want to go and maintain your, your truck? Uh, do you drive a truck? I'd imagine you, you have to drive a truck with a beard like that. Um, <laughs> F-350 Limited. Oh, that's great. I, I drive a TRX. Um, I know. Dodge. I've seen your truck. Your truck's badass. And, <laughs> and I, I just, I love truck. Anyway, so we'll, we'll, just to let people know, I'm a redneck, so don't believe anything <laughs> I say. But, but, um, yeah. but yeah, if you if you think about the opportunities of catching things early, you know, it's like, you know, we take care of our trucks so that we don't, they don't end up in the mechanic shop. Right. It's the same thing with our body. So many people, they just dismiss it. And they think that like, oh, I'm getting old or there's excuses like everyone around me is fat, everyone's depressed and it's just it's America's fault. And then, uh, you know, some it's just that the, we we dismiss it. But um, but I think you can own your health when you have the right labs and when you read them in the proper context, then you know what to do. Then it's not like, hey, here's another drug. It's like, hey, I need you eating more vegetables. Um, for example, your calcium phosphorus ratios are off or your magnesium's low. Have you thought about leafy greens or, hey, by the way, your protein totals are really low in your blood. You should probably start considering ramping up your protein and go hunting with Carrie, get an elk. Um, <laughs> and um, that's the best meat you can eat. That's what we had last night. I took my, nice. my great clients from from uh, France who are here from Monaco um, and uh, we, we took them uh, to a place that served elk and it was awesome. So. Uh, so I think there's things you can do from labs that actually move the needle on your energy, your happiness, mm -hmm. you know, you can refill the tank. Yeah, hundred percent. It's all connected in, you know, food is thy medicine largely, but then there's also some disease quote unquote in the body that food can't help per se. Sure. Um, and in the expedited fashion that let's say stem cells and peptides can, right. And that's what yeah. I want to kind of tailor our combo into because you know, you are an expert when it comes to peptides and the science behind them. And I went to your facility recently. It was myself, Ben Greenfield, Garrett Gunderson, all the, all the, all the homies, you know, Mike Geary yep. came and, you know, we just said it was a great crew. And what was really cool is you did a whole training on the front end of like, here's what these peptides are. Here's what they do. And by the way, you can try them, you know, and like, right. you just, we were like, we looked like all little druggies just passing around vials and just, doop, doop, you know, <laughs> like popping, popping, yeah. uh, you know, peptides, but nonetheless, first and, one's on me, Carrie. Though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was really cool because, you know, I learned a, a ton that day when it comes to peptides and then also your amazing clinic, just super hospitable. Uh, they put me through this intranasal stem cell um, procedure, you know, back in April, 22, um, 2022, I mentioned I, I had carbon monoxide poisoning, almost died, passed out unconscious, had about 70%, 17%, uh, excuse me, carbon monoxide in my bloodstream. And apparently 20% is the lethal dose. So I got really close to knocking on death's door and I've had some, you know, brain issues from it. Obviously, uh, I hit my head and had a concussion on the way down and got all bloody, but the, the inner effects were really, you know, eating at me. Um, and you had me on this table and then the, the, there was like a, what's that thing called that goes up your nose? Uh, Spinocath. Yeah. Spino that's what Dr. Steinle put up, up your nose. Yeah. 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 So this phenocath went up my nose and then these umbil how many umbilical stem cells did you guys shoot up in there? Uh, so between 40 and 50 million. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you got, you got, uh, you know, stem cells. And the reason we do it intranasally is because we used to use a drug called mannitol to open up the blood brain barrier, because if you do an IV, a lot of, most of those stem cells aren't going to make it into your brain. 
Right. And so uh, I was the first patient outside of a clinical study that I know of to do that. And, and that treatment has like changed people's lives. Uh, but um, was it uncomfortable for you? Um, I mean, it kind of feels like for me, like you swallowed like salt water when you have a big wave that yeah. crushes. But what, what was it like for you? Yeah, no, it was it was a um, a fairly pleasant experience. I mean, I laid back, you know, you have music kind of calming meditation music and then you have the eye cover and then you're, yeah. you know, you're in a dark room and, and you just kind of after they shoot it up there, you just lay there for 10 minutes and let it really absorb. And um, yeah, I mean, I, my whole thing was I just didn't want to sneeze because that's an expensive sneeze. If as you guys in your team mentioned, just that's don't it. sneeze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just sneeze at all the stem cells. But nonetheless, I, I had a great experience. You guys read my labs and, and pointed out some things. And then you sent me on my way with a bunch of um, supplements that could you know, increase my um, deficiencies and, and really fill some of the gaps. And that all in all, I got to say, it was, it was a very positive experience. And I've, I've recommended a bunch of the happy hustlers your way since, because, you know, it's hard to find healthcare that isn't sick care. That's more preventative. That's focusing on how do we actually optimize before the adversity and that's really what drew me to you. And not to mention you're a functional medicine practitioner, not, you know, an MD, which unfortunately, I think a lot of people give their power away to people in a, in a white coat. You know, they just, they get a prognosis and they think, oh, well, I'm dying. That's it. You know, I might as well just get my affairs in order when really there's so much more to health and to being healthy. And so this is my roundabout way of rambling to get to uh, peptides in my experience. But for those people out there who are listening, they're like, hey, okay, Carrie, it sounds like you had a good time, but what the heck are even peptides anyway? Start with the peptide 101, will you? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, I appreciate you sharing your experience because uh, the intranasal stem cells is something that I think is like one of the safest treatments for anyone who's had traumatic brain injuries, if you've had Lyme, those spirochetes get in your, your brain tissue. Um, and it's, it's just a, it's a life-saving treatment. We've, we've trained about uh, 200 clinics on how to use that therapy. I have a group oh, wow. uh, called Go Wellness. And that's where Garrett, you know, he'll come to a stand up to my, my group of like, you know, MDs, licensed acupuncturists, uh, chiros, <clears throat> whatever, you know, nature path doctors, and he'll get them rolling. It's, it's awesome. He's the but, man. Um, but yeah, the cool thing about the, the stem cells you had is in every vial in umbilical cord tissue, there's 261 peptides. And peptides are just their, their protein structures. So they're amino acid chains and they're folded in a very particular way. And that's how your cells communicate. It's like the way you send, you know, you and I will send text messages. That's like a peptide. We send an email. It may be a little more longer communication cycle. That's like a hormone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Apologies for interrupting your programming. But I have to tell you, the best investment you can make in yourself is one in which helps you acquire skills. You've probably heard people talk about, oh, just invest in yourself and you'll be successful. Yes, that's true to a degree, but you have to invest in skills that will ultimately help you achieve your desired results. And I think one of the best skills one can possess, be it an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, is the sales sword. Really knowing how to sell, utilizing pressure-free persuasion, which will make you more money and more impact. Now, if you want to know how to sell more efficiently and effectively, I just launched a sales course called The Proven Roadmap Process to Selling Millions of Dollars and Helping You to increase your conversions guaranteed. And you can get access to this new sales course that The Happy Hustle is launching at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. And if you act fast, you'll get it at the lowest price it'll ever be available because we are launching it and we want to gain amazing testimonials and social proof to further share this knowledge. So if you act fast, you can get it at the lowest price it'll ever be. That's at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. Now let's get back to this episode. And the problem is, as we get disease, as you you know hit your head, have carbon monoxide poisoning, you start causing this disruption in the cell signaling. And once you have a loss of cell signaling, 
it's like not being able to connect to Wi-Fi and then the cells don't quite have the clear direction. And that's when inflammation kicks up because your mm. body's trying to figure out what's going on. And this is where things get derailed. And so when we look at your labs then we'll say, okay, well, here's the right peptide protocol based on what you want to accomplish. And, and, and so peptides, there's at least 7,000 in the body. We've only sequenced about maybe 10% of those. Wow. But they account for all of the metabolic functions in the body. And so if you can figure out where the peptide signaling is off and you add the peptides back into the body, um, then the peptides are just going in like a key that unlocks the gene and then the genes expressed again. So that's why, you know, I have clients all the time. I, if I haven't seen them in six months, I see them again. I'm like, you look like a new person. And all we did is turn on the genes that express health and turn off the genes that express the disease pattern. And, and the, the peptides that your body doesn't need, they're metabolized quickly. They're, they're shifted out of the body. So you don't have a toxic accumulation like you would with a small molecule drug. They don't mm. steal from one part of the body and to feed another one, like, you know, most, most medications do but they're actually just natural uh, enhancers for your body's own healing properties. And that's the coolest thing about them because, uh, you know, I got obsessed with them about 10 years ago. Uh, first of all, the names um, like uh, BPC-157, uh, you know, all the peptide people know about that one, like thymus and beta-4, uh, you know, then you've got like uh, newer ones like Mackie Morellin and ACE-31 and lorazotide. I mean, um, the names are really kind of, odd but um but the they're actually really powerful substances and and so i see um what's happened with uh, some of the first peptides ever come on the market is like insulin 100 years ago and mm. now fast forward and eli Lilly is making a killing off of like trisepatide and semaglutide so these are uh, the drugs like ozembic and manjuro um, that a lot of people know of, and, and, and there are people who will just dismiss it and say, oh, there's, you know, they've got the Ozembic face or whatever. But um, we've been using those, those peptides long before they're ever approved. And that's the, mm. you know, kind of the cool thing about it. But then the pharmaceutical companies, the dosing is like 20 times higher than what our standard dose is. Mm. And, um, and then they want you on it for life. It's just like, the, uh, there's nothing better than like a GLP-1 agonist is life-changing. Um, like, you know, uh, Jeff Hayes, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, he's a guy and he's he's given me permission to talk about it, but he's, uh, you know, we've been working together for about two years, but he couldn't lose weight. And uh, he actually had a trainer move into his house, cooked all of his meals, did all the workouts for a full year, and he couldn't get his weight pat, like he couldn't get it below 185. And he's a, he's a, you know, short guy. And, and, uh, and then we got him on trisepatide and finally it changed his life. You know, his craving for alcohol and sugar and everything went away. And he's like, I don't care what people say if they're like, blame it on lifestyle or whatever. He's like, I'm proof I spent, you know, he spent like a couple hundred thousand dollars over the course of several years trying to figure it out. So, so, um, there's some phenomenal things, but you got to dose it right. You want to put in peptides like the growth hormone peptides, you're building muscle. Um, and then you want to make sure that you're detoxifying because it does change the way that your body processes food, breaks down protein. Your appetite's not going to be as, as, uh, you know, as high. And so a lot of times you end up being emaciated because you're not eating the protein. So, so don't just go jump on some of these uh, peptides without having a team of experts who know what they're doing, mm. because it, you can do it the wrong way and you can really mess things up. So, um, but, but yeah, I, I love peptides and I, I think there's, um, the, the world is so much better because of them already. And we've just scratched the surface. That's the best news. Yeah, it really is the the early days of peptides. And I, I think, I guess let's back up insulin is it's not early days for insulin and that technically is a peptide, right? So it's that the is, early days yeah. of modern adoption of some of these newer peptides that are really effective. Ozembic is a peptide in essense, right? But it just is, sure. is dosed differently and labeled differently, but peptides are for all, like if I had to put it in second grade, terminology messenger messenger 
um, what would you, what's it's your, a, uh, just it's messengers. cell communication. It's just, yeah. it's, it's the way that the cells talk to each other. Right. So they're, they're the chatty Cathy of cells and <laughs> they just message totally. your body. Hey, I need help fixing over here. And so specifically, like I've used, you know, BPC 157 and TB 500 and a bunch of these for, um, sprains and ligament tears and stuff like that. And they're just messenger cells. When I inject these peptides into the skin derma, um, it signals my body to produce more stem cells essentially in that area, right. To heal the body. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. D depending on this. Uh, but so if you're using thymus and beta four BPC, you inject it into an injured area. Yeah. Um, you're going to get more vascularity. So it, it improves the, the blood flow to the area. And then you're right. Uh, the thymus and beta four activates your stem cells. So it mobilizes your own stem cells into the area that's damaged. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a whole rabbit hole that people could go down when it comes to stem cells and you have already been there and back multiple times over. So, uh, I definitely urge people to do your own due diligence when it comes to this stuff, but then also lean on experts like Dr. Reagan and people who, you know, actually spend their time doing the research, not just there's a lot of gunslingers out there who are just trying to make a quick buck and snake oil salesmen. And I feel like it's very important when it comes to some of these, you know, more uh, advanced therapies to do due diligence. But with that, like the healing potential is absolutely like second to none. There's, there's really like nothing out there that I've seen besides stem cells and peptides that can heal the body in such an expedited way, where, where can people go? Just, you know, say someone's listening to this or watching this and they're like, I want to, I want to educate myself. I want to learn. Maybe I'm not ready for the, the full on treatment yet. Do you have a good first step for people? Yeah. I mean, um, you could go to, um, our YouTube page. I have a lot of videos, our podcast, uh, unreasonable health. Those are great resources because it's for people just like you, who, you know, I've been doing, I've been into peptides for a decade. And so it's like, um, for me, it's, it's like, it's a no brainer, but I understand what it's like to be in your shoes. And so that's a great place to start. Um, the, the other place that I find is really helpful, um, is if you use perplexity, um, and, uh, do you know perplexity? It's, uh, it's, it's different than Google, but it's like your AI assisted Google search engine. Oh, so cool. I think it's perplexity.ai. Um, but you can plug in, like, tell me the best peptides for my condition, then put in your health condition hmm. and then just start like looking at the research because, the thing I love about peptides that I don't have the same data to back up in like our supplements and herbs and things like that is peptides have been studied uh, and, and the clinical studies are from the pharmaceutical companies trying to build the next blockbuster drug. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times they're just dismissed because they run out of funding. And so they'll stop a trial like with ACE 31, like as a myostatin inhibitor. So you get all this folostatin, you build muscle quickly, but they, they stopped the study because some of the, the they used it for kids with uh, muscle wasting syndrome. They stopped mm. the study early because they had a bloody nose, but it was like pretty benign. And so, so for people who like love science and you want to see the data first, um, that's a really good place to start. And then the worst thing that you can do from there is like go and find a, a peptide because it you know it matches everything you're looking to accomplish in your health. Then you go find this rogue um, yeah. peptide from a source that's not FDA. So you want to use uh, peptides that are prescriptive based from FDA uh, approved compounding pharmacies because they do have regulations, they have inspections, and we've tested peptides that people buy online. And uh, a lot of times it's not even what you're paying for and they're still expensive even when they're online. And it's, it's like a fragment of the protein, or in some cases it's just saline. And that's where, you know, you, you ha run the risk of contamination and, and yeah. infection. So, so yeah, but uh, I would just encourage people to do that. Read my book, the peptide blueprint. Um, yep. you know, you can, Great book. you can, you can call my office and my team, you know, we'd be happy to send you a copy, uh, at least a digital copy and physical if you'd like, but it's, it's a, 
it's a my peptide handbook is a resource in there that makes it very simple to understand them yeah yeah i have your book in in the peptide handbook and you know again it's all about doing your own research but i urge everyone out there watching and listening like if this is of interest to you to optimize your health and and feel amazing and you know recover in a fraction of the time well give reagan and his team at east west east west health a call um they're doing it at the highest level there's all scientifically validated studies that they back all their pr protocols up with and it's just a really positive experience when it comes to a you know healthcare it's it's unfortunately a shame in america what what most of western medicine does to patients and I, I just, I always seek more alternative and holistic remedies. And I know you do as well. And, and you'll tell them too, if, Hey, maybe you don't need these therapies. Maybe you just change your diet, you know? And I've heard you say yeah. that to people too. And that's, what's awesome. It's not like you're just prescribing just to make a buck. You're literally keeping it real. You're saying this can help you. You don't need this. Maybe you do need that, you know? And it's, it's really, it's rare to find people of your nature, keeping it real <laughs> when it comes to healthcare. So I'm a fan. I hope everyone out there reaches out and, uh, you know, learns more. Uh, let's, let's kind of dive in just before I let you go. I want to ask you some of our more traditional happy hustle questions when oh. it comes to, uh, specifically, you know, we talked about health, but we also, I like to ask like a happy hustle hack, something that is uniquely Reagan, something that you do that maybe you don't talk too much about. Anything come up for like a happy hustle hack that uh, we could deem uh, to the to the audience? Um, so I, I love um, like cold plunge. I think you and I talked about that. Yep. Um, but probably my favorite um, morning routine is um, jump in the cold plunge and then do sprints. Um, you know, and when there's snow on the ground, as there is in Utah or Montana, um, then just jump on the treadmill. But um, I, it's just something where if you can get your body moving first thing in the morning, um, it just sets you up for a really great day. And so that's something I guess I, I talk about it quite often. Um, so I'll share something else that might be of, of more interest. So I have two sons that are 18. And um, there couldn't be different, more different in their personality. One is like a rap artist. He's produced like 50 songs. He goes by Joe Steez, if you want to find him on SoundCloud. Um, my other boy, uh, Dominic, he's um, he's like MMA. He's got cauliflower ear. And he's like, that's, you know, he's all proud of it. I'm like, that looks rough. But anyway, that's, I guess that's your badge. That's when people know, don't mess with someone with cauliflower ear. I wouldn't mess with my son either. But, but the thing I found with my boys is... Um, Doing activities outside, um, you put you all in flow state, and it's like such a cool connection. So if you're a dad, um, you know, get away, like do your best. I mean, you got a young son, Carrie, and so whatever you can do to peel them away from social media and their phones and get them outside, it's like such a magical time. Like those are my some of my favorite moments in life. It's just when we're like on the flow trails at Deer Valley and or we're hiking or, you know, we're just laughing like, you know, on the dirt bike and side by side up in the mountains. It's just like that's I think the magical moments come when you can be in nature with the people you love. And that's yeah. like my favorite. I, I, I mean, I totally agree. Getting outside in nature, doing things that, you know make you feel alive, especially with those you love. That's happy hustling at its finest. Let's talk about money. You know, I always like to ask a happy hustle hack when it comes to your money, maybe something you do to save or invest or spend wisely. Um, anything come to mind here? Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I grew up on a cattle ranch, but my dad was also a banker. So every Sunday I had to do like goals and financial goals. And in fact, I wanted to buy a, an ATV, a Yamaha Blaster when I turned 13 and it was $2,000 and it was this gorgeous, like 1990. And uh, my dad said, well, you can buy it, but you have to save the same amount of money um, before you buy it. And that, and I didn't even question it. I was like, okay. So I just like worked hard. I moved sprinkler pipe. I did all the fence fixing. We branded cattle, you know, all the whole bit. 
and I earned the money and got the four wheeler. But he taught me the value of delayed gratification. And so, um, so I've, I've never like been worried about being broke. I mean, I went, I lived in Hawaii for four years where I did my integrated medical school, didn't care. Um, but I did learn that one experience. Like if you want something really bad and it's um, not going to serve you in your future endeavors or it's not going to help you build an empire, it's not an investment, it's a, it's a toy like that was, just make sure you have twice the money um, and then hire Garrett Gunderson or, or get it because he helped me put the trust together. Yeah. And then, you know, he's like, go into a sectors of the market that you understand. And my wife's a real estate agent. So we have real estate properties. We, we buy notes on, on houses where people want to live in it forever. And they've already, we've got a bunch of equity. So we partner with somebody and, and then we get, you know, residual income that way. That's great. But there's yeah. there's so many great things in the in the real estate world, uh, and you can depreciate your taxes with real estate, and that's where we pay very little taxes, and yeah. every year we make more money, but we have more depreciations. This is why they're trying to put Trump in prison, and it's like, well, that's the way the law is written, so that we right. take on the risk of owning real estate. Like, come on, yeah. But um, but I don't know if that's helpful. But um, those yeah, are some very. things that come to mind. Yeah, very helpful. Thank you for, you know, pulling back the curtain. And I think there's so much there. And it's yeah, when when it comes to optimizing your your tax strategies, uh, Gigi's the man, uh, Mr. Gunderson. Yeah. So uh, yeah, shout out to him. Um, let's talk about spirituality real quick. Anything for, you know, spirituality that you do to connect to a higher power, maybe, um, you know, that we could deem a happy hustle hack? Um, so Mother Teresa has um, uh, one of my favorite quotes, um, all rivers lead to the same ocean. And uh, I grew up in a very religious community, religious house, um, and left that and then got into Eastern medicine, Taoism. I studied Zen Buddhism for almost five years. And then I realized that um, I, I don't like need to be spiritual. I just like I am. And it just it goes back to that quote, like, so I think life is um, it's a spiritual experience. I, I didn't you know, someone else made that quote. I think it's like AA or something. We're in a physical body having a spiritual experience. But but I just look at um, um, as spirituality as just like doing what's best um, to serve and be useful to as many people as possible. And that's that's the spiritual mission that uh, that I go by. But I love all I, I would like when I am older. Um, I would love to just uh, study religion. I mean, I just I, I find spirituality and religion some of the most fascinating things because it provides context for our culture. Yeah. And I think it's one of the most important things in life. And so I really appreciate you bringing it up because too many people are placing their spirituality and their wisdom on some damn influencer who hasn't done half the stuff they're talking about. <laughs> right. And it's like your spirituality comes for you doing hard things in life. And then helping other people do hard things from life and then transforming on a day-to-day -day basis. That's that's true spirituality in my mind. Amen, brother. Uh, we both share a Taoism background. I trained with a Taoist priest and Kung Fu master growing up. and um, I didn't know that. Yeah, just my, awesome. my, my whole childhood was, you know, basically with this Taoist priest oftentimes. And um, yeah, very much aligned with the Eastern methodology. And uh, yeah, super no cool. I wonder why you have that. such a a grounded energy. I mean, you're very enthusiastic, but you've got this sense that I like, Oh, I trust the guy. I mean, it, <laughs> it's, you, it's awesome. So, um, I'm so, uh, that's so cool. You said that, uh, that's that, what a, what a cool uh, way Thank to live. You. Wow. Yeah, I agree. I, I do think there's so much to spirituality. Nonetheless, I want to respect your time. I know you got a jet. I want to put you through the rapid fire round real quick and then we'll wrap this up. Oh, Answer oh. honestly. First thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go. Okay. Favorite food. Go. Uh, burgers. I love like bison, elk, whatever burger, like it, with my wife's Kamut bread. It's amazing. I love it. Nice. Favorite movie. Matrix. No doubt. All three of them. The trilogy. Heck yeah. Favorite book. Mm, the Tao Te Ching. Oh yeah. I love that book. What's your spirit animal? Uh, it is a bison. <clears throat> oh, heck yeah. If you had a billboard for the world to see with your last piece of content on there, Reagan, what does that billboard read? 
with my last piece of like um like a message or like a or, message to the world last thing um that you would say probably um don't believe everything that you think hmm i like it and three things you're most grateful for really grateful that i met um my wife like she's like um, talk about grounding in my life and stability and, um, you know, cause I'm, I'm like wild and I love doing crazy things. And she just like, is an anchor in a really positive way. Um, create structure. I'm really grateful to be a dad. Um, you know, I, um, when my daughter went to college a couple of years ago, I haven't cried that much in my entire life. I like <laughs> missed the hell out of her, but I was so proud of her. Yeah. Like yeah. she wasn't even supposed to graduate, uh, high school, they thought, no, oh, she's got Neva sebaceous syndrome. She had these neurological issues. She just transformed. And, and so I'm so proud of my kid. I'm getting emotional right now. And then I'm, I'm really grateful for my calling to be a healer, a health transformer, because as you know, I, I have a really uh, amazing profession because all the time I get to have people thank me for the work that I do. And I find my work is sacred. And so I appreciate the calling um, that I have there. So, yeah. Oh, crush that rapid fire round, Reagan. And brother, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you, man, for sharing your love, your light, your wisdom with myself and the happy hustlers and your, your healing modalities, your research, um, your ability to communicate complex, you know, scientific studies and, and uh, you know, cutting edge technologies in a, in a simplistic way. You really are changing people's lives, and I'm just so grateful for you and looking forward to a further collaboration. So thank you again, man. I just want to say that. Yeah. Thanks for having me on and um, the happy hustle. Um, like this is what people need because entrepreneurs are the ones that will change the world and, and always have. Yep. But they can't do that if they're burned out. So um, and you bringing in the wisdom, the light, the connectivity. Um, I want to thank you and acknowledge you because you're young, man. And I can't imagine like, give it three more decades, like carry Jack, like you're, I mean, uh, not just millions, maybe billions of people that you'll, you'll impact. Right. So keep up the great work and uh, appreciate you and look forward to future connections. Amen, man. Thank you so much. I, I definitely received that. Just real quick, where can people go to follow you specifically online? Anywhere um, out there that you're more yeah. active? Uh, LinkedIn. If you guys okay. uh, DM me on LinkedIn, I'm very active on that profile. Truth be told, I don't know how to use anything else. Um, but <laughs> okay. um, but it is Reagan. It's me. Just go Reagan Archibald on LinkedIn, and and uh, that is me, a um, hundred percent of the time. Love it. And then final question, Reagan. What does happy hustling mean to you? That means um, doing work that's renewing you. And so you're hustling towards something that's making an impact for society. It's, 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 it's the thing that like, yeah, we all have our passion, but does it make a difference in somebody's life? So the hustle is like, I'm, I want to make as much of an impact as I can as a health transformer. And then the happy part of it is like having the work renew itself so that mm. it's not like by the end of the day, you're burned out. You're actually get fuel from the work that you do. And that's the happy part. And I don't know if that's your definition, but that's what came to mind. So. Hey, no, that's perfect. You, you I love created it. it. Hey, I love it. Thank you, Reagan Archibald, y'all. Appreciate you all for watching and listening. We are out. Peace and love, everybody.